So in the last lesson we looked at how to create the player and it's fairly successful. It's a very basic player but it moves left and right and it jumps so it can actually make its way through the levels. But in this one we need to see how we can change between our levels. So for instance we've got four levels set up and hopefully yours are all set up and good. Um, so when we finish um, battling on level one then we want to move to level two and level three and level four. So we need to set up the components now that allow us to do this. So once again, everything in Godot is set up via um, scenes. So what we're going to do is set up a scene um, called something like exit that allows us to move on to the next level. You can call it something like um, next level or something like that. It really doesn't matter. So let's do that now. So let's go scene, new scene. And then we need to set up a very specific node here. So the node we want is an area 2D. And this allows us to kind of pull from certain other kind of components that are built into this particular node. So if we click on this plus button, and the first node we need is an area 2D. So if I just start typing area, it should pop up here somewhere. And there it is there. So double click on the area 2D. And once again, we can call this something like next level. Let's call it that next level okay so it doesn't really matter what you call it but that's what we're we're going for so what we now need to do is set up the collisions for this so let's set up a sprite again so we can have some kind of image for it so we we'll click on the sprite one um, and the image that I want is from our assets pack so if I click on this assets pack and go to tiles now it's near the bottom and we've got a few that we can choose from there they are so we can have this exit or we can have a sign and we can write whatever we want on the sign just by using some kind of label in conjunction with that. Or we've got left and right. So I'm going to use this right sign here to, to kind of cause the reaction. So if I click and drag that and move on to my texture button there. And let's just label this sign. And what was it called? The right sign. So let's just call it right sign just so I know. Fantastic. Um, the next, we need to set up the collision. So we've got everything we need here. Let's just set up the collisions. So once again, we're going to use the collision shape 2D. So select the top level and then press the plus button. And then you can start typing collision if you haven't got it down here on the left hand side. And find the one that says collision shape 2D from your list. So I'm just going to double click on this one here. And then it brings it in. And these are my collisions. So the collision type that we're going to use again is going to be something like um, a rectangle. And we can just paint over the, oops, under that control Z. Um, we just can paint over the whole thing. Now, before I do that, Actually, no, let's do this one first and then I will lock it down because you do have to be very careful that you don't move this, otherwise, it can cause a lot of issues. So, let's do the rectangle again. And once again, we need to move the ones from the inside, do not touch the outside ones, otherwise, you will cause yourself all kinds of, of issues there. And you can make this as big as you want. So, grab the inside one again. Um, I Actually, I'm going to make it slightly shorter. So when the character runs into it from this side, it actually doesn't trigger the reaction until it gets halfway into the to the actual sign. And that will make it look a little bit more narrow, uh, natural. So if I just go to about there, it should look really natural. As it hits the sign, he'll go in. Um, so we've got everything set up there. We just need to set up um, a script in a moment. But let's just save it first. So scene and then save scene. And then it's called next level, which is great. And let's do its thing. Right, so we just need a script that tells it when the player hits it, that it can then move on. So let's do that now. So let's select the area 2D node and then click on this script button. We're going to create a GD script again. We're going to inherit from area 2D and we're going to put it just in this root path. Um, and that should be fine. So let's just create that and we have this script. Now, once again, I've just copied and pasted this and I'm going to have to change a few bits of my code. But if I delete everything except for this first little bit here that says extends area 2D and then just control V because I've got it selected. So this first bit of code is very, very clever. And what it allows us to do is when we apply this to a particular scene, it allows us from the inspector menu, it allows us to choose the scene. So 
What that basically means is we can reuse this node over and over and over again. Because if you imagine, if you hard coded this, it would always go to level one or it would always go to level two. And then you'd need four scenes just to do this one job. So by exporting here and then calling up this file, um, you can actually say, look, I want to go to level two this time and I want to go to level three. So that's what this line of code does here. And then we have these variables here. So we've we've created the bodies and it says, look, when, when something overlaps with this particular item, um, do something. So what we want to do is when it finds the body and it's going to be our player. Now, I called my player something like player, like that I think it was. I can't remember if I used a capital. So let's just check that. And I think if I check here, yes, I did. Well, no, that's a player script. Let's just check the level. There it is. I did use a capital P, so this is what it needs to be called. It needs to be called the same as your root node, and that's how it's going to find it. So it says when the player reacts with this particular signpost, do something. And here's that get tree that we used in the app. So it says get tree, change scene, and then we call this next world. And the next world is this bit here. It says, right, whatever you put over here, that's the world we're going to go to. Um, so pause the video now and just input that. Might be mindful of uppercase um, letters as well so file is all uppercase be mindful of these little commas as well and all the brackets and also the indents okay it's all very important that you get it exactly the same otherwise it won't work so copy that bit of code in now and then we'll move on so let's save the scene and make sure we're good so we save the scene and we have this next level scene so if I head on back over to level one so click on level one and if I zoom in, we're going to add the level one in here. So click on this, this top node here, and then we're going to link to it just like we did with the player. And we're going to click the link, and then we're going to find our next level scene, which is here. Double click on it. Um, it puts it straight up here. Now, one thing I do need to check before I do anything else is go back to that um, the scene that we just collected and make sure I locked it. And I had a feeling that I didn't. So click on this top node and then lock it down with this button here. Because the problem is when I move it in a second, um, it might not take the um, collision with it. So with, with the top node selected, just click on this button here um, and it puts that icon there. It means it locks everything in place, which will stop it from kind of moving. Once you've done that, you do need to save all scenes. Now we can go back. Now, now I've done that, I can now move this particular node here. And where we want to put it is right at the end of our scene okay so let's just move it so when my player gets to this particular part here it will allow it to move on now if I click on my next level you're going to see that we have this next world node here now this was the bit of code that we created that said export and if we click on the file we can say look what do you want to go to so we're currently on level one and we want it to go to level two so if we click on this file icon and click the file and then choose the scene that says level two, and it will go to it. So that is now set up. Let's see if that works. Let's just save all scenes. Let's just make sure it works, make sure we haven't got any dodgy code or anything like that. So here we go. We're on the edge of the world. We're gonna move forward. Now, here's my sign. So when I click on this, and remember, I haven't set the collisions up until halfway through. So when I click on it, hopefully it'll take me on to the next scene. So here we go. And it goes off to the next scene, which is great. Um, and the only reason that worked with the player as well is because if you remember last lesson, we put the player onto each of the levels as well. So the player can then just take over. So let's just do that one more time. So we've got level one set up. We've checked it. Everything works. And you can be as eventful as you want with this. You don't have to use a sign. You can use a door or something like that. Whatever looks, looks good to your levels. So let's do the next one. Let's open up level two. So level two drops down, and let's put my sign up here. So click on this top level again, add the link. We want the next level again, and there it is. So it's all locked down this time, so we can just move it, put it into place, and this time I'm gonna put it here. It doesn't have to always be at the end. Um, once we got that, we then select the node and we get this next world bit. Now your one, you're going to want to send it off to level three. Uh, my level three doesn't work um, because I've only created two levels, but yours, you're going to want to do a level three and then you're going to want to do the same for level four. 
um, and then eventually you'll have this end screen as well. So let's just click on this button here and file and I'm just going to take mine back to level one but you should take yours on to level three obviously if you've got something there. So for now I'm just going to take it back to level one and we should be all good. So let's check my levels. So save all scenes and we'll go back to level one, press play. Now hopefully all being well we should be able to go all the way through and then back to level one. So here we go dropping through the air quickly whiz through this level, nice short level, and you can make your levels as big as you want. Click on that, and it drops through the air again, so it can do this, and we can go through it, and then we have to try and get to our next level, which if we remember, we just drop there, there we go, fantastic, and then when I click it again, it will go back to level one, and everything works. So that is your mission then, to make sure all of the levels can now be linked together and you get that same result. So get that in and I'll see you in the next lesson.